Hello there, it's Wayne Robson again, and I have settled on a title for this series, so yeah, so it's uh, Nuke for 3D Artists, which is well, better than some of the other options. Right, okay, this one. Um, this is all about depth of field in post, so I'm going to show you how to use the ZD Focus Mode, okay? Now, we've touched on this in one of the previous videos, but I thought it was such an important one that um, it would be useful to go through it in some, some more detail. Okay, um, this is a multi-channel EXR, so if I just go up here, uh, you can see there's the depth channel and all the other channels we have, right? So it's the one of the Apple Store type thing. If you want to hear, now the first thing you're going to notice is it's on result. We don't need that, we need it on focal plane. Now your depth of field here, will affect how um, wide the focus is. So if I look at this, all right, and we can see there the green is perfectly in focus. If I increase this, see if I did it like that, and quickly go back to result, you'll see we've got a subtle depth of field, okay? Now, if I go back, and then we thin this out a bit, and then try and focus it on, I don't know, some of these bits here, right? So, and we got result. Right, now we have a greater depth of field. Now the size will affect everything. So the larger the size, the bigger it is. So you see there, it's quite thin. We make it very, very wide and it'll have hardly anything at all. It's there, but it's not amazing, you know. What you could do is, of course, take it like this, and we'll just try and focus it on this little cabinet -y thing at the front there. So the rest of it should be fairly blurred out, apart from the little cabinet thing. So there we have it, like that, okay? Now, there's different filter types. Now, this is not always um, obvious, but normally it's basically a circle, a disc. You can change it to a bladed one, uh, and see how many blades we could say it's um, it's most obvious on areas like these up here uh, there's not a lot of brightness in the image to work with in fact I may try and add a little bit of contrast here just to um, see if I can get something meaningful out of it um, you can see how round you want it and stuff like that. It's basically, yeah, if you know anything about photography, it's trying to um, mimic that. And you can do the amount of feathering on it. You know, we can say we want uh, no inner feather. You know, brightness will turn that right the way up. Um, we could have an aspect ratio. And so if you're working with anamorphic footage uh, where it is squeezed horizontally when you render it out, so, you know, this would be, um, wouldn't be 19, 1920 or 1930 in this case, but 1920 by 1080. Um, it would be half the width of that, okay? Now you can see the brightness will increase due to the depth of field, all right? If I take that back off and just disable it. We've added a lot of, in the grid there, but it's, you know, there's a limit how much you can basically do with this. You can, um, I've seen people go in and shuffle out um, the Z depth, you know, and then work with this separately, uh, you know, so that would be in here, we'll go Z depth uh, as the depth comes out, and then sort of grade the hell out of this and, you know, trying to, to work with something. The thing is, you don't need to. Just about everything you need is in the Z focus. Now, your depth channel is where you pick it. You must have your depth channel there. Um, otherwise, you're going to have to, you know, shuffle it in. Now, I'm not going to go all the way through all of this. But if I go back to this here, we can add bloom on here, which you would get, get naturally in a camera. In fact, let's just for a second change the fo point of focus here because it's it's sort of doing my head a bit. I've just got to, we'll put it on, I don't know, the chair. And put the size down a bit like that. Make sure the depth of field is a little bit wider on the sofa. And it should be a bit more pleasant to look at. So we can have the bloom on. 
as well. But you've got a gamma correction. All right, so you can get some interesting looks and it's not uh, perfect. Um, you do have to be careful with uh, your depth of field pass and make sure you're capturing everything in the scene. Because for example, if I just go back to this thing here, right? Now, if, if we only had that, there is no way of recovering this information from a floating point image if it's completely informationless, right? So remember that, make sure you have your maximum distance set up no matter what render engine you're using, um, and that you should be good to go. So yeah, adding depth of field in post is great because it means you don't have to re-render, and you can, you can try different things. You know, it's the same as when I've said before, you can use a you know, glow on things and, you know, turn the tolerance up and blah, 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 you know, how bright you want it or maybe you want the colour or take the saturation down. You can do all sorts of things in post. That's the whole point of this series of um, videos to show you little bits of things that save you some time. So anyway, I hope you like the video. Again, I'm Wayne Robson. Bye-bye.